created to entertain, educate, and evolve the modern day deer hunter. Uh, it's constant learning curve here. I, I don't uh, profess to be any kind of professional. I'm merely a student. And so uh, when we're done here tonight, I'm going to check that out. That's just life in general. Literally, I'm not exaggerating one bit, Kurt. Like, I literally figured out last night how to plug the damn phone into the thing. 10 o'clock <laughs> last night. I might have to call you because I think I'm. this is fucked up a little bit. Yeah, man. Nah, never mind. I'm good. I just, because, you know, our whole thing has always been us guys sitting in the studio bullshitting or I call a person and have a conversation with him. And it's just, I was like, man, I would be great to, like, be able to you know, call and have a couple guys on and talk to a couple guys. Yeah. I really need to figure this shit out at some point, but be better if we could just all get together. And doors. Drink. Oh yeah, absolutely. It's too bad. Everybody just can't get together and drink beer and face to face. I know. God, that would have been a fun night. How you feeling? Yeah, make, feeling better? I feel like shit. Do you really? Dude. Yeah. But I can't, I, I don't know if you can tell or not, but I feel like I'm all stuffed up. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like absolute hell. You kind of, I sound. wouldn't know the difference. <laughs> you sound good to me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. But this year, man, I don't know what it's been. I just, I don't know if I'm just moving too much. I or, think allergies, uh, sinuses are hitting a lot of people bad this year. I got like the flu, I think. Oh, that's, I'm glad you're on the other end of the phone. Yeah, dude, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. I'm just trying to, I took part of the day off yesterday and I took all day off today Damn. just to try and get recouped so I can hammer it out and get ready for my elk hunt. How's so I, I, elk hunt? Ooh, man. Yeah, I was just going to ask how Steve's feeling. He's a little, being a little quiet over there, uh, but he's probably next to get sick from you. Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm looking at Kurt like, hey, you didn't tell me you had the fucking flu. That's bullshit, <laughs> <Yeah>. man. <laughs> if he was my buddy, I don't know. I might have to rough him up a little bit. Or at least yeah, raid his beer did. fridge. <laughs> that's the problem. Shit, I brought the beer over. What oh, the you know what? I feel like I did the same thing. <laughs> and he came me and Steve me got a lot in common problem. here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I could be on my deathbed and Steve still have a problem. Yeah, kick right. my ass. Yeah, <laughs> I just a, a, pull the plug. <laughs> hey, well, he's not. He's gonna make it. No, just pull it, man. Gonna get strangled with that said plug. Like what the fuck, man? He hasn't having <laughs> this. He gets slapped before he even got close enough to the bed to pull the plug. <laughs> so where are you guys oh, right now? Uh, the studio Northwest Illinois. I don't even know. It's technically Northwest, West Central. Yeah, I would say Illinois. I'd say Northwest. Well, I cut. Ca- yeah, well, well, I don't know. that's a good deer hunting state right there. Why don't you let Steve throw an intro in so people that are listening to this will will probably cut in somewhere we're around. Recording right now? What about recording since uh, was the second we got on? But I said we'll, fuck like five oh, we are recording. Well, <laughs> I, uh, I didn't know we were rolling. Don't Sweet. worry, I trim the fat. You know what I mean? Uh, get the fuck out of here. I, cool, I would have cut right into it a little more if I knew we were rolling. Yeah, shit, dude, you just said something. I figured Steve could maybe throw the the intro so people know what the hell they're listening to. Do you want me to? Do you want me to enter your podcast? I mean, you'll get like 4,000 more downloads. But you know, oh, nice. man. Wow. <laughs> Four th- class bow hunter prints. That's money lucrative. Uh, we, we'd hardly even notice 4,000 more. So. <laughs> hey, by, by the way, everything, it's like we a blip, huh? the, <laughs> everything we said was off the record. So if you print that, we will sue the shit out of you. <laughs> we'll in your house. <laughs> you like me now. ta We would if Didn't we could afford a law lawyer. <laughs> ta just trying to bang a paralegal. What's up? There you go. Give, give, <laughs> give the intro, Steve. Hit him with a working class style intro. Like right now, you want me to? Yeah, yeah like slap where, it across their so faces. Where, where are you guys right, coming? Right. Where are you guys coming from tonight? Where you hail? State right, your hey purpose, guys, this is, dude. This is uh, this is Steve from the Working Class Bow Hunter Podcast here with Kurt. What's up? Uh, we're cool. on the uh, we're on some Deer Hunter Podcast. I don't know where these guys are from. Are you guys from Michigan or some shit? We are. Awesome. Well, dude, hey, I'm. Uh, we're the, glad to be here. The uh, latter. I'm glad, I, I'm, I'm glad I can do your intro for you on your show. Uh, the, 
it you're hired nice. too, by the way. You're it supposed to give him the working class style intro, man. Damn, bro, do you guys want me to do that again? Do it again. No, because you ruined it. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I, I ruined everything. Oh, I apologize about that, guys. You're supposed to rock it. How you doing our show? I, I, didn't, I didn't know. Because like, we're here and they're there and we're just not face to face, man. You guys we, aren't quite sure what to do with your hands, are you? No. I'm disappointed <laughs> in you, man. Are we seriously recording or are you guys just fucking around? No, yeah. No. We're, we're, we're probably using this. <laughs> yeah, this seriously? show's pretty okay, fucked so up. <laughs> I'll start the recording here now. You're going to do a legit intro now like you do on our show. 1600 bucks later. Okay, you want, the, you want that shit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, that's what I thought you were going to not even think about answering with, and it, it oh, turned into all this. Some more Dude, beer. You're not yeah, like hold on. Here, hold on. Let me gimmick this beer here. Real Shake quick. what give your me, mama give gave you, man. Give me a second. Give me a second. Here we go. Slam it. I can hear it. Did you, sh- did you finish Steve. something? Go ahead. Go on. Right. Oh, no, not yet. You ready? Oh, yeah. I got I'm this ready. for you. I'm braced. You guys are listening to the. <laughs> Come on, don't do that. I'm sorry, shit. the pause was too long. I'm right now. Where's my snare? Where's my snare? Yeah. All right, ready. You guys are listening to the Deer Hunter podcast. This is Steve and Kurt. We are here at 1600 Bucks Lair Place. We are. I don't know where those guys are, but we're calling in the beautiful Bucketorium Studio. You guys have heard it before. We are in lovely Sherrard, Illinois. Don't even know the zip code. I am so happy that you guys had us on, and that I'm doing my whole spiel. I feel like a jackass. And this is probably like the eighth time I've done it, but uh, thank you for having us on. Thanks, Nailed guys. it. Nailed it. I, I like that, man. People are just makes perfect. <laughs> people are going to see the title of this podcast, and the expectations are going to be relatively low. So I think I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. No doubt. Hey, Low hanging fruit is what that is. <laughs> we just did. It. Hell, tonight actually, I haven't even released it yet. Tonight, episode two hundred and thirty eight goes up. So I'll be two hundred thirty eight times you've done that. Well. That'd be 239 times. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We've done that. Technically that's a funny. lot more. Some of them didn't see the <laughs> didn't see daylight. <laughs> well, that's Those are in the vaults. Did. Yeah. Some can't ever be released, but that's, thanks for having us on your show, boys. Absolutely. Appreciate that's it. funny. Low-hanging fruit. What? Hey, what's wrong with that fruit? That fruit looks fucked up. Is that fruit rotten? There's a bunch of flies <laughs> flying around. I don't get it. Uh, yeah. Shit, man. That fruit has a big-ass forehead. What's up with that? <laughs> I've never seen a peach with a huge forehead, but look at that! Look at that low-hanging motherfucker right there. Can we cuss on your show, by the way? Oh, please do. Oh God. Okay. All right. Please do. <laughs> You'll make Kevin like, feel better. <laughs> this is both a this is both a safe and un unsafe uh, space at the same time. We're still ready to clean uh, podcast too. So amazing. Let's keep it going, guys. <laughs> man, man. Well, I, I do have to add for all the listeners out there. We literally have no idea what we're going to be talking about on this, so we just said, "Hey, you guys, good." And then we called, and uh, here we are. So yeah, um, I, I think for about ten minutes of this, we didn't know we were actually recording. Yeah, we had no idea. We like had to I let said, them know it's all off the record. I'm gonna trim <laughs> trim the fat, and I'll bring it in appropriately. I thought that was well, perfect. We, so what we we're gonna agree. talk about tonight is, uh, I think we're gonna talk a little bit about deer hunting, maybe a little bit about podcasting, um, doing both of the same things while having a great time, and. Uh, Maybe have a couple beers all along the path this evening. I think you guys are prepared to do that, right? Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, man. what the hell did we call into an NPR? <laughs> that sounds weird. We're going to talk a little bit about deer hunting. This was the Diane Ream show. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, that's right up our alley. So yeah, we do. all hunting things considered. Well, <laughs> all hunting things considered. <laughs> uh, well, Ryan and I just figured finished up like a uh, kind of like an official business podcast so i was kind of excited to uh flip the script here and get on with you guys and just kind of shoot the ship because oh i think we have a mutual listener that put us in touch with one another and i started listening to your guys podcast and fuck man it was like such a relief to know that there's somebody out there that maybe cusses and swears uh more than we do in a space (laughs) that where people don't cuss and swear yeah i mean isn't that weird it's well, I there's exactly a lot of wet blanket mean. podcasts out there, man. Yeah, it, you know, the reason why our podcast is the way it is is because we don't have to try to do it that way. Right. And the reason why our podcast got started is because when I first started the podcast, I always listened to podcasts. And when I went to find a hunting podcast, they were all just so lame and dry and just... Welcome to the Booga Booga fucking show, la, 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 a FOC, and you know, that whole shit. And then it's just, that's every episode, which, you know, some episodes that's fine, but for every one, you know, you got to mix it up. You know, like, like you guys just said, do your business podcast, do the, the company podcast, the tech 
podcast, the Straight Whitetail Tips podcast. Do those episodes. But every now and again, you know, switch it up. Have a, a pure fun one. Do something out of the box. Give, you know, make it fun. Have fun with it. Doesn't all have to be, you know, all serious and just uptight bullshit all the time. Yeah, I mean, if you guys are hanging out at a, at a bar drinking, you know, there's some ladies, you know, you want to impress ladies. Did you want to talk about, you know, fights he got in and uh, all that <laughs> all that crazy shit? Did you want to cuss and cut up? I mean, you're not going to try to get ladies like, well, you know, technically I shaved like a, a grain off uh, off my broadhead. Uh, and it's playing <laughs> really well. But those episodes um, are fine, too. They're though. fine. Yeah, they're good. But that was never going to be our style because, you know, when, when I met Kurt, Kurt's a tattooed individual. And, you know, you don't, that's another thing you don't see, um, as much. I mean, you're starting to see it a little bit more, but yeah, that's, so it's like, we knew we were never going to be the ordinary. We're not going to be full of information because I say a lot of stupid shit a lot of times. So that would yep. sink our credibility. Yep. Um, even if I do have a shit. doctorate, well, even if I have a doctorate <laughs> degree from the university of, uh, Phoenix suburb, whatever the hell is a suburb <laughs> there is, but like, dude, we knew we were never going to be ordinary. And yeah, we, now, I remember the first couple episodes we did, it was like, you know, let's kind of, you know, let's kind of not swear so much, you know, and well, we were, we're, going, going, we're going, we were at first, we we're going industry standard. Yeah. For the most part. And then something happened and we just said, fuck it. Fuck I, I, I don't know what happened. We got like an office space got... type scene happened there and you're smashing your copy machine. <laughs> right right <laughs> right yeah it's like we got hypnotized and the dude had a heart attack right before and then all of a sudden we came to, to work and uh, i did absolutely nothing and it was everything yeah. i wish it could have been but yeah go, I, going back to what you're saying I'll just give a big shout out to d-rock man that guy is the guy's the fucking man is that who the mutual listener is? i'm assuming right yeah for sure man d-rock yeah, hey, it is. D-Rock is uh, one of my favorite human beings. Hey, he's a WCB today. soldier, just so you guys know. So he's yeah. ours. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, he reached out, and he put me and Kurt in uh, touch with one another. And I called Kurt, and shit, what was that, three months ago? And we're like, hey, that'd be cool. Let's do a podcast. And then we've talked about it for about three months. And yeah. uh, then I was, like, trying to cancel this week because I've got a million things going on and you're like yeah dude like all right we'll do it maybe in october i'm like fuck that's not gonna happen like we gotta yeah. we gotta make <laughs> this thing happen but that's just how it goes man i mean it's seat of the pants and you guys work uh you know i'm i'm assuming you're not just sitting in the uh the professional working class bow, tell, bow hunter studios all day and just the only time you get out of there is to walk to the mailbox and collect checks i'm i'm assuming you guys got other jobs and business too of course, of yeah. course, yeah. We like to think that's all we do, but that's not the case. <laughs> what the hell yeah, do you no, guys we... do? I work for John Deere. Nice. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a union tinner. Oh, Are you a really? Tin knocker on the show. Uh, fucking tin banger. Yeah, I'm just a tradesman. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not that high up. I don't got that many responsibilities. I don't see a lot of shit. <laughs> uh, I'm a union fitter here out of Detroit. <laughs> oh shit! Yeah, you don't, you don't do hardly any fucking work. <laughs> yeah, we just, we just make the money. We just, we just make the wheelbarrows to push the money out. Let's <laughs> let's not turn this into one of these kind of things. Right I off like of tinnies. It. Fuck, my brother's a boiler maker. They still make boilers. They still make boilers. <laughs> They're trying to do all our work, but we'll uh, we'll see how long that lasts. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's always kind of a fun thing, you know. It's like uh, you know, every day you deal with it. You know, you got uh, other podcasts that are starting to come up. Other trades you know you're all trying to have the same goal it's the same with other hunters dude everybody's got the same goal but everybody's starting to do everybody else's shit man it's uh, common isn't it? well it's it, funny it like sucks. kevin's mentioned a couple times on the podcast if you're not a blue collar guy that works with your hand in the shop or on other guys you just don't get the same type of humor hey as take, we t- do take it easy on me now. yeah you hear that walt <laughs> <laughs> calling out Walt from Chasing Tales, that white <laughs> collar. Dude, you can, you can put a blue Sharpie on that collar all day. You flip that thing inside, I know it's white. <laughs> I know it's a white collar. The long hair don't cover up that red neck. different, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, that is true to, a, to an extent. But that's like the same type of uh, camaraderie that happens on job sites is like kind of in the same relation as like a hunting camp. Yeah, absolutely it is. and it's interesting because i think a lot of times in the workplace it's to like get through the miserable day but yeah, yeah. something about at a deer camp god i mean i mean you'd literally be arrested if some of the conversations were recorded you know just the they go oh, yeah people get <laughs> loose real quick you know 
Yep. It takes oh, yeah. a while to decompress after deer camp. We've said that many times. Like my wife, I'll I'll make a comment a, a day or two after deer camp. She'll just look at me like, "Who the hell did I marry?" <laughs> Dude, this is not an exaggeration. I I came home from deer camp one time and I was young, living with my parents, and I looked my mom straight in the face and I said, "Mom, we passed the fucking beans," <laughs> and she's like, <laughs> "It was just." I couldn't, you know, I couldn't, it was just Freudian slip. Just the way it came out, you know. <laughs> Pass those but fucking beans, Mom. Can you imagine what my wife goes through when I have everyone over here every week, and sometimes more than that, and then our carbon episodes now, um, you know, in the studio, my wife's outside of the studio, may come out, I mean, she just gets it, she's cool as fuck, which it helps, but the shit, like, if you see Steve after, like, 15 beers and a good podcast, <laughs> like, the stuff that, like, we say, Sam's just like, oh, man, all right. I think me and cool. Steve would be two peas in the pod. We tear some Yeah, you got up. a hot wife? I'd hit on her, too. <laughs> she is pretty hot. She's labeling her hot wife on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's a, who's ugly wife in your phone, then? I got to know I that. don't know. I, don't she's, know. Uh, I usually just put hearts next to it and half wife, so when she's sending me mean text messages, that I, it just seems nicer. She's super. Yeah, right. She's super. Hey, tell her send me a. Tell her send me a selfie. I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be the judge of that. She's <laughs> super pregnant right now. If you're oh, into yeah. that too. Cool. <laughs> cool. She can't get any more pregnant. What's up? <laughs> All right, that's enough of that. I'm just kidding. Yeah, that's what. That's that what shit went like western about. really quick, man. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I like about you know we can get away with uh, a lot of stuff because it is like hunting camp and most of the like you said, dude. Most of the, our listening base gets it. I mean, dude, this is our, I know that our podcast is either listened to on the truck, in the truck, driving to or from work, or through like a DeWalt or Milwaukee speaker. You know what I mean? <laughs> on the job site. So, Absolutely. You know, it's not like uh, it's not like the way it used to be. You know, people are listening on their computers. Dude, people are out and about. And that, that always makes us feel pretty good because it's like, you know, we like to be there with everybody. You know, you're, you're, you're brothers of the struggle. No matter what, every aspect of life, whether it's hunting, work, you know, you're going through a rough patch in your life. It's just, there's always somebody out there. And now that we've built this awesome community of the, uh, we've got the greatest listeners on the planet and we've made a lot of friends with them. And, you know, we just keep meeting people like we met you guys. It's just, it, man, it's, it's the shit. Uh, it's one of my favorite things about doing this. And what keeps me going is the people that I get to meet through the every day of just doing this. It's well, fucking awesome. Fucking cheers yeah. and amen to that yeah. because uh, I don't think that uh, you can speak at a higher level to why we love doing this. And, man, there's – yeah, that is the coolest thing when you establish relationships with these like-minded people. And, uh, you know, exactly what you just said. A guy posted uh, a thing on his stories this weekend on Instagram that he was listening to the Deer Hunter podcast on his DeWalt radio while he was tearing his deck apart, you know. And I'm like, fuck, that is awesome. Hell yeah, man! How long have you guys been doing your podcast? We're uh, we were a year this spring, so we're yeah. getting on. You know, I don't know, eight, uh, probably going on like fourteen, sixteen months, something like that. Very cool, nice. man! You guys are just Congrats. starting to walk, yeah. Heck yeah, man! I think we probably <laughs> we, we probably made all the payments on an, uh, return cans from uh, all of our recordings, man. <laughs> yeah, the, honestly, that's our biggest source of income for the podcast is returning Kevin's cans. bottle returns. Yep, for sure. <laughs> we did, uh, We in Illinois, we don't get, like, um, return cans with Iowa, they do. Uh, we figured one time how many beers we drank, and it was a number that it was like, if this podcast continues, it's probably going to be the last thing we all do. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> like, if we do six more solid years of this, it's like, yeah, dude, we're all just, no one's going to... You know what's going to happen? Everyone else is going to die young and happy, and I'm going to be old and fat and Just sad. Alone. No, now I'm going to live the longest. <laughs> <It> sucks. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you get all those super grumpy people. You know, when you go try and talk to an old boy about hunting his property, you know, he's just old. He just wishes he would have died, and that's why he's mad. And you're like, hey, can I hunt your property? No, no one can hunt it. I'm pissed I'm still alive. It's like, okay, dude, sorry. <laughs> I'll, go ask, I'll go ask a neighbor if I can hunt that timber. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to kill your deer stuff. Rebel. <laughs> right. cool man so you guys are just you guys are just getting the ball rolling here how long Probably you guys been rolling for uh we're like right at three and a half years dang really. old timers yeah yeah you guys are like a mature yeah, you guys are like uh getting to be a mature buck yeah four and a half man we might be right for the picking we're a couple wily spike horns over here <laughs> yeah we're fork we're forking <laughs> out this season this uh this right well, now. if you think about it i mean go back four years ago how many hunting podcasts were there? Just a mm, handful. I, I mean, 
did I even know what a podcast was till like a year and a half ago, dude? I'll admit that. Yeah. No fucking. Now, dude, everybody and their cousin has a hunting podcast. You know, which I'm cool with. Uh, I, I yeah, think it's, them... it's a good thing for podcasts as a whole. Yeah, and it's good for hunting. I for the most part, uh, you know, everybody's <laughs> different, right? It's like a cup of coffee. You can't say it's the best cup of coffee. Everybody's got a different palate and likes something different. So. One guy might like a hunting podcast a whole lot and listen to it all the time. And I'm like, dude, that hunting podcast sucks. Like, the host is a complete pussy. I, I can't stand listening to that. But He's a complete pussy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you, what, which one is it? I want to find out. Are you thinking, like, you could whoop this dude's ass? Is that why you don't listen to it? Like, yeah, you can kill big deer, but I could knock him out. We're, we're not, not going to do any shout outs. We're not like going to get, right we're not going to get can't specific. Put that out on him. And, <laughs> I know what you're saying, though. Like, and I'm going to, and he's not going to kill Berg Bucks and us this year. So, Oh, wow. That's a good one. That's a good All one. All right. Now, I, the, the thing we're, like, we're not recording. The same thing that like you just said, you know, is... <laughs> good thing we're not recording. <laughs> uh, we might be we might be the podcast where we're too loose and people might not be into that. Oh, there's so no I, doubt. I like, I like them quick and easy. There's no doubt that some people have put our podcast on and potentially your podcast on and been highly offended within 30 minutes and not probably re-listened. Possibly disappointed. But <laughs> there's a channel for them to go to, too, and that's the great thing about podcasts, and it goes back to what we were just talking about, you know? It's a total exactly. bummer. It's a total bummer when I meet a guy and talk to him face to face, and then I listen to his podcast and I get two different things. I don't want that, dude. That's what makes podcasts cool is that you can be open and honest and unique. <coughs> that you don't have to format it into this uh, this rigid little box that's been preassembled by somebody else to tell you what to do. Mm, rigid little box, for sure. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, not to not to keep bringing up like swearing or anything but have you ever met a person and you talk to them and they just don't swear at all yeah i don't talk to them again i don't trust them it, it's it's kind of weird we got a we got a couple Unless buddies they like got that. some it's, weird ass vice no Something. we have a really really we do one have of our a, really close friends that he does not cuss and i think it's the greatest thing ever it's funny though it's like a will smith he, huh yeah it's funny the way <laughs> he gets around cuss words will smith. but like if somebody just doesn't even like put an alternative in like they just avoid it completely like you kind of think something's weird with that. You know what I mean? You're kind of like, yeah, man, this guy's a really trouble. Well, if you're oh, looking rats. for like a deer hunting podcast or if I was looking for like a golf podcast and, you know, I saw their, their explicit, I'm like, okay, these are my kind of people. Yeah. Get that I, fucking club. I need to take that back too yeah. because I'm always saying things and then kind of regretting that I said them. And a lot of times I'm getting better now at like not being so judgmental okay i'll just use this as an example right i was at like a store like a to buy some jeans and they had ripped jeans that were like a hundred dollars a pair and i'm like what the fuck is wrong with people who's gonna pay a hundred and ten dollars for a ripped pair of jeans some pussy finds out a week later i got a great friend that the last two times i seen him he's got some custom ripped jeans on and you it's a mutual friend of ours and his and and your guys too you know who he is i'm just gonna call him out sam Ubel. you're a beautiful beautiful man your 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 waist to bicep ratio is highly annoying and uh you wow. he likes his ripped jeans and his ripped shorts but uh you know I was like, God damn it! I was gonna like publicly shame somebody who does that, and come to find out, one of my great friends does this. I think he yeah. dissed us up there because we do. We were coming up to Deer Fest, and we knew he was gonna be up there. I think he found out like we weren't bluffing, and we we went up there and we handled some uh, some beer drinking business. I don't think he. Uh, I don't think he wanted to handle it with us. He we can he took handle his our beers. He took off, man. <laughs> no, uh, we didn't see him. <laughs> He had some nice stuff to say about you guys. He was over here a couple weeks ago. Uh, he was in town for a fishing tournament. And he came over. He had some sweet rip, pre-ripped uh, <laughs> jean shorts on. <laughs> and uh, he was looking super awesome. And uh, we did a killer podcast. He had some nice things to say about you guys. And it's funny. You go back to talking about how we were talking about this whole community thing. Uh, I think I found uh, or first heard Sam uh, on your guys' podcast. You guys had him on maybe, uh, I don't know, what it had to have been a year and a half ago or something. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Sam's awesome. We've had him yeah, on, dude. I think, a couple times. Dude, and, and now I've, like, had dinner at his house with him and his wife, and he's, like, a friend of mine, and it's just, like, he's a you cool think guy. about the rabbit hole, and it's like, holy shit, that's crazy how I met him, you know? Right, I met him yeah. the first time uh, when we did that uh Dan and Fault 
the hunting beast scouting clinic out in Wisconsin. I met him and his wife, and super cool ass guy. He obviously knows way more about fashion than I do. <laughs> yeah. All right, but no, what's cool about like what we're all into the hunting podcast industry, the hunting industry. It's really small, you know. Yeah, it's smaller than you think. Yeah, for, it is. Yeah, way from TV shows to podcasts, it's way way smaller than you than you think it is. Like, I feel like I know just about not everyone, but. I can go to any trade show and run into 10 people I know for sure. Right. You're all about what, what do they say? Uh, if you just a couple different people from knowing everybody, was it nine, nine people? Yeah. Something, something weird like that. I don't know. No. Yeah. I mean, that's true too, though. You know, we can't, uh, we can't go to a classic without sitting and talking with one of our buddies, you know, every, every run down the aisle. The evolution of deer hunting is a pretty crazy one. You know, there's a lot of talk right now about people not wanting to, I guess the younger generation, you know, we're losing numbers, right, every year. It's like a constant. I find that crazy. I think it would be just the opposite. It's kind of like a constant talking point and a worry, right? But I think a lot of that is that uh, people aren't making it fun anymore. And uh, I think it's it's props to, like, a platform like your guys'. You guys do make it fun, you know? Yeah, and I appreciate that. And I don't, I don't want to get too technical, but, like, with that, you know, I'm always like, oh, less hunters, you know, probably more hunting ground. You know, that's not <laughs> always, always a science. But so damn selfish. It, you know, that's it's not just it's not just with hunting, but like, uh, you know, the, the United States and a bunch of other countries are going to really struggle with um, rebirth uh, uh, replenishment rates for people. So that's not, not just hunters. It's across the board. Like people our age, uh, you know, millennials just aren't having kids. So, I mean, it's it's one of those things that maybe speak for yourself. 15, well, I mean, you know, for the most part, like the baby boomers generation kind of set the standard. So now it's, you know, and I kind of wonder about it, too. I'm like, OK, you know, in 15, 20 years down the road, what are hunting licenses? How expensive are they going to be? And, you know, are you going to be able to like in Illinois? So, like, say the hunting population declines in Illinois, we get two buck tags and, you know, basically unlimited dose. So it's like, OK, if there's a 3% drop in hunters each and every year in 15 years, you know, how many bucks are you going to be able to get in Illinois at that point? You know, or, or how that, how that population is. Uh, that's stuff that I kind of think about. I think it'll fluctuate, man. I think we're just at a low point right now and it'll, it'll pick back up. Well, I, I it might. What I was attesting you know I mean? to is everybody making it this super serious endeavor. And, uh, I don't see a whole lot of people talking and focusing on, how fucking fun this is. And mm. not, I mean, the social part of the, the deer hunting camp. I mean, that's what I've looked forward to for man. It's, it, since my first deer camp, you know, as soon as I was leaving and driving home for my first deer camp, I was like, damn, I can't wait till the next deer camp, you know? And, uh, that social gathering is just as important as the actual act of deer hunting. And I, w- I, I feel like, not that many platforms focus on on you know how fun it is. For sure, yeah, I'd agree with that. Definitely, it's the, the it's camaraderie the, you know, goes back to that cut and dry type podcasts and hunting shows. But yeah, I mean, I, I think that's an accurate statement. And by the way, I'm sorry that I'm not talking a lot. I feel like absolute dog shit. <laughs> Dude, you you look sicker than when you started this. Yeah, you should give him like a drug or something. Uh, I don't. I, I don't do drugs. I live a clean and healthy lifestyle. But uh, Kurt, reach in that uh, bag right over there. <laughs> <laughs> Not the yellow one, the purple one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't do them, but if you need them. What's up? I'm kidding. I don't sell drugs. That's a joke. I hope everybody picked that up. Just need to clarify. I do not sell drugs. <laughs> Right. It's you funny. I'll say some yeah. off the wall shit. And people take me so seriously sometimes, and it just cracks me up. I don't know. Do you guys? Uh, I mean, I I know just from looking on social media and whatnot. You guys have a larger listener base than us. Do you guys take heat from, uh, you know, Not like much c- companies or just? Uh, do you get emails telling you like, hey, you know clean it up or this or that? How, what what? How have you dealt with that, Kurt? Or do you not get much of that? Take, um, you know, yeah, yeah, we have got a lot of that, uh, especially more in the beginning, like, I guess when, cause it's kind of like a, like, if you looked at like the growth of our podcast, I would say it looks like a, like, it looks like steps, you know, it goes up, plateaus, goes up, plateaus, goes up, plateaus. Well, the first big like growth 
that's when I, we started getting like a lot of hate. Like, uh, just a lot of it was like, Hey, it started out as this, Hey man, I tried to listen to your podcast in the car and I had my kids in there and I had to shut it <laughs> off. And my response was, Hey man, sorry about that, but they're marked explicit. So, you, you know, you can see that clearly when you hit play and that's your fault for playing it when yeah. it says explicit. And that's why you only get your kids on the weekend, make their sh- decisions. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. They're like, that's, <laughs> if, if we mark it explicit, we're telling you that it's bad language. That's, so that's it's why like, you only get your kids on the... That's good, man. <laughs> you know what I mean, though? It's like, well, it's marked explicit, so... Yeah, it's, it's your fault, dumbass. Like, yeah, we put it out there for you like that. So there, it started off as that, and then we've had our fair share of people reach out to our partners or sponsors or whatever <laughs> and write into them trying to can us um basically like letting it happen like oh yeah fuck these guys you're using these guys as a representative of your company that's like bad business i will never support this and ha- nine times out of ten they send us those messages and laugh yeah it's funny um, when you're it's funny when more of it more most of those people are local people mm-hmm. um well actually i'd say a lot of our hatred is people that are local that don't even know us personally which is, I think, is very, That's very entertaining to me. Um, but yeah, we do get a lot of hate. We get some emails. Uh, like we do our veteran shout out on every podcast. We've had we had one person write us an email taking a veteran shout out the wrong way, like we're anti-American. How yeah, could you, how did you get that out of a veteran? That's shout-out? what I said. I I responded back, and I actually I it was weird because I couldn't respond back to the email, so we shouted him out on a podcast, which he probably never listened again. But we're like. It's it's just one of those things that people are idiots, man. People are fucking retarded. So yeah. we just you gotta like just get that. Sometimes people just don't get things, and no matter what you do, you can't please everyone. Right. But I'm trying to think uh, through my sick brain right now. <laughs> what's what other hate we've gotten? But it's it's pretty consistent to a point, but it's not overwhelming. I mean, you know, dude, there's there's always the um, we get a lot of hate on Steve. Yeah, and, idiot, and there is dude. because I and I play that that character so so well. I'm the heel. And uh, people are like, oh, man, Steve's an idiot. I'm like, well, way to go, you fucking Mark. I made you think that. By the way, I'm <laughs> you fucking <laughs> Mark. <laughs> that, but a lot of times, a lot of the hate comes from Steve because Steve will go to tell a story but never get to the point of the yeah, story. Yeah, that's, that's another thing, too. I'm really bad at that. Man. My dad will listen and he'll be like, God damn it, fucking Steve. <laughs> and he told me the last thing. He's like, I going to get to the fucking point. I remember, like, he asked me something, and he goes, before you tell me, just get to the fucking point. <laughs> and it was like a simple like, yes or no question. <laughs> yeah, no, that, we're going to work on you on that, because if you take more than three steps to get to your story, uh, you're getting muted on step two. Just Kids, wait. Hear me out. out, man. Hear me out. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, dude, it's bad. Uh, uh, you know, I get it from my father was the greatest storyteller I've ever met. And that dude could captivate an audience when we were camping. He'd always tell these great stories. I always wish I could <laughs> replicate that. But, dude, I started. You no, know I think it is. I think a lot shit. of times when you start to talk, you don't know exactly what you're going to say. So you stutter around while you think of what you're going to say. And then you take off. that's probably what it is, too. That's I'm, for I'm sure with you, Steve, is. man. You got my full support. I mean, that dude, that's probably why, I, you know. Dude, my Tinder bio, man. I had to like redo my that thing like four, five, bio. six, seven, eight times, man. Chicks are just getting characters. so bored of your intro, they just swiped you. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, dude, you, you need to know my life story before you swipe right or left. No, no they're gone. Later. <laughs> He's talked too much already. That's it. That's funny. We got a we got a Steve in our group too. We haven't let him on the podcast yet. <laughs> oh, who's this stupid son of a bitch? I want to hear about this kid. Don't don't let him on. <laughs> His name's Steve. <laughs> Oh my gosh! His idea of mobile hunting is uh, breaking down a ladder stand and uh, having a ladder stand and a fifty-pound bag of apples and strapping it to his back in a rainstorm and hiking out on public land and assembling a ladder. Dude, the st- guy is so fucking entertaining. It's ridiculous. It's awesome. I was only bringing and it if, up because I know the guys give you some knew shit about Steve's ladder. Legacy stands. on our show. There's uh, there's some times where Steve didn't make it out almost. You you've gone through some rocky times. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's been uh, it's been rough. You pulled out of it though. I You're... did. I I, I, usually, I always end up uh, good in the end, but uh, yeah, the road to get there isn't good. You're like a I cat. You up... land on your feet, right? Well, I... <laughs> yeah. No, he don't land on his feet. It's a thing. <laughs> I land on a soft. <laughs> right on your head. We got dropped. <laughs> the soft spot no, on you your head. Went, <laughs> you land on your back, then we got to take you to the vet to fix you. That's the thing, <laughs> and then we barely get you gone. The vet. <laughs> 
You guys are animals. Well, well, Steve, I know I've sent you personal messages on Instagram just saying, thanks, man. Like, you made my day. That was funny as hell. Um, <laughs> I'm sure you get so many of those, you don't even recognize the fact that I sent a, one or two of them in, but I enjoy the shit out of a good laugh, man. That's one of the harder things to seek out nowadays, you know? Uh, you know, dude, the one thing I... Uh... I was always good at was uh, at least making some people laugh, and you know that's that's the strong suit that I got going for me. And um, if I can bring joy to anybody's life, like not to get too sentimental, I guess, but dude, if I can make just a couple people laugh, um, you know, say we're going out with some friends, I make two people laugh, dude. That's a good night for me because they had a good time, and that that's all. I, you know, I, I, we talked about it on a podcast that might not be released. It's like, why am I the way I am? <laughs> and you gotta go ahead and tune that in. I think it's like two thirty nine. It's towards the end, but I, I love making people laugh. I love when everybody can have a good time, because I knew there was those times where I was not having a good time and no one else was, and I'm like, I hate that. I hate having bad times. So that's why I enjoy being able to say the stupid shit, and people love it. And I'm like, well, if you guys love it, then I'll keep saying stupid shit. Don't care what happens to me. As long as you guys are happy. Well, you do, uh, if I'm not mistaken, do you do a little bit of stand-up comedy? I do. In fact, uh, I got, uh, I'm got doing a little open mic uh, this Friday. Nice. Which uh, a couple of our buddies from Michigan are coming down for. Really? And, yeah, we're all going to hang out. Uh, big shout-out to Doug Hood and Bill uh, Bergeroff. Bergeroff. I don't even know how to Bill say Bill Beef name. Stroganoff. I don't know what his name is. Beef Stroganoff's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Bill's a good dude, but yeah, they're um they're coming down. We're all gonna hang out, um, and I was like, hey, there's an open mic. Uh, I'll go do it. I, I just I enjoy getting up in front of people and telling jokes, man. That's why the podcast I really enjoy doing, and uh, you know, it's fun. It's fun. Nobody. It seems like a lot of these podcasts, no one's having fun doing it. It seems like it's like a like a project for them that they are gonna get graded on. You know what I mean? It's a good point. I just it's like about cut, fun. cutting loose, right? Like you said, enjoying yourselves. Uh, man, cutting loose for a minute in your life. Well, I think a lot of it is there's, right? I mean, you could go on line and figure out how to have a popular podcast, right? There's like a formula for it. If, mm-hmm. you, if your mission is to get popular and monetize your podcast, there's a, there's a pretty good formula to do it. And some guys will try to... To a fun- point. Yeah, yeah. This this is where I get weird with that because, you know, like there's so many hunting podcasts out there now and just podcasts in general. And if you don't have, if your crew, like between me, Steve, and Eric, I feel like we have a pretty unique dynamic where we're all different and we all vibe in a unique way. Yeah. Where for some reason, people like to listen to it. Some people just don't have that. Right. And no matter what you do, you just don't have it. Like it's two thirty eight. It's our next episode. It'll be up tonight. Was it two thirty? Okay. Yeah. So that's what Chip City. And then our producer for Carbon and Jack Vicar, we talk about like how some people got it for like hosting te- television shows, and there's just some people that don't right. and just can't ever get it. And that's that they're never going to be a good television host or a, a good podcast host. Because if you can't hold a conversation, it's going to be tough for you to, to carry on a show. Yeah, no shit. So it's it's not meant for everyone, you know. Some people it comes easy, you know, like. For example, Joe Rogan's the GOAT. You know, he's the biggest podcast of all time. Right. And that guy could sit by himself with no guest and just put out a good episode. Yeah, look at Bill Burr, a guy like that. Right. Dude, he just his podcast is just him just rambling shit and he's always getting everybody laughing. It's just <laughs> yeah, you gotta have, you gotta have that charisma. And some people have charisma and they do very terrible shit with it. So yeah, Jonestown. <laughs> but <laughs> Well, that and the thought process to carry on like the show. Like I'm not firing all cylinders right now, but like just example, some of our shows where we don't even have an agenda, we just talk. Or like our bonus content episode on the last one we did, where we <laughs> we made Steve a tender on air in the bonus section of it, and we just uh, you know we just went with it. It, it was it was just us cutting up and having a good time. If we got so many messages on that, people I was very surprised. Actually. Loved it. I, I was too. It, it, people loved it, man. I think they. You know, I I think what uh, what works for us and what's going to work for you guys is it, you know, it's something we've been ha- talking about this whole episode. It's a nice break. It's refreshing. It's like, okay, you know, these guys are really relatable. You're swearing. You're making Tinder. We all got friends like that. Dude, it's so <laughs> relatable. I will listen to these dudes 
because they got a jackass Steve who carries around apples like he's Johnny Stevie <laughs> Appleseed or some shit like that. <laughs> I, you know, everybody's got someone like that, and I, I think we it's relatable. We were lucky enough. Yeah, we were lucky enough to find a perfect mix. Like we have three very polarizing um, personalities that somehow mesh. And I think that's what's made us gel as well as we have. And we figured out a nice formula and have have ran with it. So I I enjoy the shit out of what we do. And I enjoy looking for things that, like, like you guys, like I've listened to a couple of your episodes and I'm like, okay, this is awesome because these dudes are a breath of fresh air, you know? Unless you're sitting in our studio smelling our air. <laughs> oh, man. Well, shit. The chamber of Did fire. <laughs> Sin crusher, bro. Yeah, you better get, you better get a crusher. ozone going, that motherfucker. Oh, man, straight up ozone. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, you guys should uh, maybe do an episode about uh, opening up Steve a grinder account. There you go. We uh we got some things in store. We can't talk about it right. Not now. quite that desperate yet, but stay tuned. <laughs> yeah, we stay tuned. We have some things in store. Late don't season. It, Steve, so, oh yeah. You don't want to ruin your know. plans for late season. <laughs> <laughs> I do have a couple of mature, mature shooters on uh, Tinder right now. They're, there you go. Uh, they're mature, and I'm no, I'm thinking it's gonna happen. We're talking post. One's got a though, bum right? leg. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? We're One's talking post rut right now. Post rut strategy. What's your po- post rut strategy? Uh, basically, you know, if it's uh, anything, if, if, it's, it, if it's down, if it's blonde, it's down. What's up? Right. Everybody, so everybody brown, goes with Miss brown. Michigan. <laughs> 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 oh shit! <laughs> Gotta love it, man. Gotta uh, love it. Well, yeah, this is gonna be uh, this is gonna be this is where people tune both of our podcasts. I was like, if I was ever gonna check those either of those guys out, eh, it's over. I, only the, only the true fans gonna, will stick do. by for that. The real ones. Do yeah, you guys have right. any? Uh, do you guys got anything like uh, new or exciting going on for the steer season? I know you guys had uh, our buddy uh, uh, Drew Walters on here a couple weeks ago, and you guys were talking about saddle hunting. Are you guys thinking about getting crazy this season? Is anybody? making any moves to do anything differently than they have in the years past. I know you guys are in big buck land down there in, uh, in Ohio, uh, and things are Ohio. We call it Illinois, Illinois. My bad. Uh, I'm an asshole. Yeah. I, like, uh, they ain't no about, buck guys. Uh, that was rude. Uh, that was, uh, well, no, new, that was fucking that, rude. Can I talk about a couple of things new that doesn't really have to do with deer season before I talk into what oh, we're yeah. going to do for Ryan's deer Ryan's glass and deer out of my window just spilled a beer all over my oh, carpet, and I just shit. insulted you guys <laughs> by saying you were from Ohio. So You got what That's you deserved, good. Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just wanted to say a couple of things. One, Elite just put out our own special edition Elite Ritual. Uh, it's the Working Class Boner Edition. Really? Um, and you, you can check that out. Um, you can go to our Facebook to find it or YouTube. Uh, the video is up on carbontv.com underneath working class bow hunter. Uh, our, our series just launched on carbon TV. Uh, we have two episodes up already there along with some little, some clips and stuff like that. Like that elite ritual is on there. You can check that out. So we're the first bow hunting podcast to be on carbon TV, really? uh, which we're, we're Damn. really proud of. We're at our league uh, right here now. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, those are that's two new things that happened for us. What the fuck? And... Hang up, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> fuck these guys. Oh shit. <laughs> so no, we're super proud of that. But I don't know. Going into season, man, I, we're gonna put those rituals to work. That's, They're gonna uh, get an email goal. after the show. Yeah. <laughs> don't ever bring that shit up on our show again. Yeah. Uh, you guys can't talk to the Deer Hunter podcast anymore. Yeah, did you guys know who you're talking to? <laughs> you should really do your fucking research, you guys. <laughs> no, man, we're. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm excited about deer season. We got the. We got a couple of fun things going on uh, on social media. You know, just some some dumb shit that uh, our uh, our producer Jordan put up, and it spawned into something. Um, you know, something a little more than that. We're What's gonna cooking? get into a couple of. Just tune in a couple more episodes. You'll, you'll see what you'll see what's going on. We're kind of a group, man. With carbon, uh, we did our first episode of carbon. And a lot of it was we didn't know what the hell we were doing or how we were going to do it. Yeah. Um, but as the episodes go on, like episode three releases this coming Monday, um, and that's where you start to see us really finding our groove and with like what we're doing and how we're going to do things. Yeah. So, so it's uh, I mean, carbon TV, it's video content, right? So you're doing video pack. I'm assuming you're doing, uh, you're, you're running cameras in the studio. Is 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, and our studio is small, so it's pretty challenging. But yeah, like the, the first two episodes are up now. The first one's the pilot, and that's with uh, Whisperwood Outdoors, and uh, our produ our produce producer producer is from Whisperwood Outdoors. So that would be a great uh, pilot episode, talk about what we're doing, and then season or uh, episode two is with their buddies Austin Chandler and Ross Bigger, and they talk about two giant whitetails they killed. And we talk about those stories in detail, and we overlay hunt footage and trail cam footage and all that in the story during the podcast. So for people that like to get the visual while they listen or watch, they get that with it. And then, uh, like, episode three, this one coming up, it's uh, we went on a turkey hunt, and uh, our boys from Prairie Storm Outfitting in Kansas and hunted Rio turkeys. And we killed two nice birds out there, and we have them in studio talking about the hunt and we overlay in the footage from the hunt. So nice. Um, it, it's kind of a different twist on hunting podcast, especially like the video side of things. Yeah, no kidding. Um, <clears throat> you guys get like a ton of content out. I mean, what what is going on behind the scenes? I mean, you just said you have a producer. So, I mean, producer for carbon. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm the I'm the producer for all the regular uh, audio episodes. God, dude, you must work a lot because I mean I know the hours that I put in, and it's not a fraction of the hours that you put in. Um, your website's yeah, man. pretty up to date. Like things are getting out all the time. Mine's like, hey, yeah, these guys are super cool, but they haven't updated their website in like six weeks, and I'm like, dude, I'm getting on that tomorrow. Chill out. <laughs> but like, you must be going a lot. That's probably why you're fucking sick. Yeah, you know, I Walt, my I don't know, I don't know if you guys know Walt from Chasing Tales, but uh, he actually messaged me. He's like, dude, you know why you're sick? It's because you never quit fucking moving. Right. And I'm just best sure to catch candles. up with you, dude. Yeah, and it is, man. It's, I'm burning candles at both ends pretty hard right now. Um, but that's all right. I mean, it it's just how I'm wired, to where I want to do everything myself. Where I, you know, I'll try and change up the website when I can. Like, it, people don't realize how many hours it takes to run a consistent podcast, like weekly. And then sometimes, I mean, fuck, last week we would have put out two, but we filmed a carbon episode, we put an audio episode out, and then I'm always running around doing shit on the weekends, hanging stands, and, and I'm still doing deer hunting type shit, you know, in between all this. And um, playing on an elk hunt, too. And playing like, on an elk hunt, and getting a new bow, and trying to shoot every day, and just, uh, you know, life. Yeah, you're, um, working, you're working a couple full-time jobs. I mean, you're, you're, it sounds like to me. You're working a couple full time jobs and putting overtime in at both of them. Yeah, no, I definitely am, and it is wearing on me. But that's the nice thing. Like hunting season is kind of a break for us because all the bullshit gets filtered out during when once this year early. You know, having a mid September elk hunt coming in, especially one I have to plan so much for. Re the fall comes on you really fast. Yeah, um, where, are you, where are your elk cutting at? Colorado, Western Colorado. Nice. So, but, you know, add that in, planning for this elk hunt. Me and my dad just purchased a new lease this year. So we're still, you know, doing food pots, getting stands up, all that stuff. And then trying to put a, a show out one to three times a week and then trying to map out all our season one episodes for carbon. Um, it, it's a lot of work. So where's the, your lease at? Is that in your home state there, Illinois? or? Yeah, it's about an hour south of where I live. So it's, a, it's Warren County, Illinois. Okay. How many acres uh, do you guys pick up? That lease is 80 acres. Nice. It's like eight, 84 acres. Just you and your old man? Yep. Yep. Me and my dad. So so you guys, do you mainly hunt private or public? Uh, I'm pretty much all private. Well, I am all private. Okay. Steve's hunted a mixture of public and private. Yeah. I'm, uh, for right now, I'm mostly, mostly private. Um, the thing that we gripe on about we're scouting out some public right now. Cool. We, we scouted some public and uh, our uh, one of our guys for... Carbon, uh, one of our camera guys, a good buddy of ours, Cameron Tank, he's all about public hunting, and he's he's getting after it pretty hard. I've I've got a couple of pieces, and I've got a couple of other opportunities for some private. The problem with Illinois is to get to public land, there is not a whole hell of a lot of it anywhere close. I mean, you got to drive an hour, hour and a half, and you know when you go to Iowa, like from where I'm at. I am a six minute drive from living in Iowa, right? We're like right on the river. So I could feasibly move to Iowa. And from, uh, if you ever look at where the quad cities is, right? You look at this big suburban area and you look around it. Don't Illinois, it all away. Uh -huh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just giving you guys where it's at. If you look around it, there's right. nothing in Illinois, but if you look at where Davenport is, 
15, 20 minutes away, you will have ample opportunities to hunt a shitload of public ground. I was set it up a little better. They're laid out a little, a little nicer. And, you know, you, you drive down a lot of highways, you'll see a shitload of public ground in Iowa. Illinois just has pretty big chunks in a, uh, in a secluded area. So it's, you know, if we, if there was more public ground, I think I'd hunt more public ground here, but it, it, it is what it is. See, that's a big thing with us. In Michigan, we're pretty blessed to have a lot of public land. And uh, just recently, myself and Kevin's brother, Drew, uh, their cousin, uh, Jason, we started uh, scouting and uh, like March, and then we'll go down and we'll hunt a couple times during the season in Ohio. Um, and we're, we're all of us, I'd consider all of us pretty big BHA supporters. You guys have probably heard of your local chapter, whatever, Backcountry Hunters and Anglers. Yeah, I've heard of them. I don't think we have one locally, but... Dude, uh, it's something really cool to check out there. If not, they're super awesome people to talk to. Uh, all big-time hunters, uh, fishermen, outdoors people. Drinkers. Drinkers. Yeah, normally they, <laughs> their events are... Uh, Held at breweries. Uh, yeah, they're pint nights. But anyways, uh, for myself, uh, I, I was always in the past, before last season, 99% private land. I had some really good 80-acre uh permissions that i had to hunt um back in the day before I, I i knew my you know before when my head was up my ass probably with deer hunting thinking that uh i should go out and expect to hunt like a drury or something like that but uh this last season getting more into the the public lands and luckily like i said we, we do have quite a bit here in michigan it really has opened my horizons and i've it kind of i feel like before, when I was hunting just private, I had big blinders on, and uh, there's a lot of different opportunities you can get. And uh, being that we're the getting more involved with BHA, you're get get more exposure and uh, I guess overall uh, insight into what's going on with the management of our public lands from the you know the federal level and state level. And uh, I don't know, it's it's been kind of a big eye opener for me. It's it's just a whole different game of fair i don't know the, the guy next to you has got just as much chance at that deer as, as you do type of deal what he's basically sure, trying yeah. trying to say is we're trying to make hunting public lands great again yeah i think that yeah man which is awesome <laughs> that's the thing like that's a question i get asked a lot especially more and more everyone's uh yeah for some a... reason everyone's a kayak public land hunter now but <laughs> oh, dude, awesome. it's it's so uh, don't everyone's get me wrong like, what kind of kayak you got bro oh yeah, bro like, oh, man totally I'm like, dude, if you want to make public <laughs> hunting lands great again dude that there needs to be a wall around oh, that public my kayak's like made out of recycled wall. kale <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Dude, I need yeah, I, 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 i'm kidding i love the idea of uh the kayak thing dude it's public land is dream frustrating as fuck though dude this i went for late season down in january i'm sitting I, I i set up a spot our plan was to hunt all day so we got out before sun up never hunted this piece before i set up after daylight i'm sitting around and i'm looking at my map and look at the spot i'm like yeah i'm not super fucking crazy about it so uh, around eight o'clock eight thirty or so i creep down and moved on to a different spot I'm like dude this spot's badass you know looking at the map kind of looking at the sign I, I was able to catch shit in the daylight more i climb up on my spot and I don't know, maybe uh, about two hours into it, I've got two groups of small game hunters converging on my location within about 30 yards. And I, I waved at one guy. He waved, acknowledged, he saw me. They stopped for about about 20 minutes or so and bullshit, you know, bullshit <laughs> with each other, told some drinking jokes. Drinking some beer. Oh, drinking some beer, having some laughs. I'm thinking, okay, this is fucking cool. And uh, they they split up. I'm like, okay, it's all over. And uh, the one group of guys just stops like, 45 50 yards away from me sits down and starts squirrel hunting for another another 40 minutes or so <laughs> Dude, it just it drives you nuts and i i had a similar experience my first sit down in ohio last year some guy about eight o'clock in the morning i'm thinking i'm hearing deer creep in and then some guys just walking in circles trying to pick a tree to hang a stand like 20 yards from me so it's it comes with its challenges for sure, man. It's a uh, yeah, it's a different no doubt. game. <laughs> yeah, like, like saying that. I also think though too is because I like how I said I get asked that question a lot. I think a lot of guys that are like all public land like to secretly hate on the dude that hunts all private, like me, and they think that. And I'm not saying that you think this. But people I'm are jelly. No, you're pretty much reading my like, mind right now. Well, you should kill a big buck every year. Well, it's like, well, if you've ever hunted private ground, no matter how good it is, it's not in the bag. You know, it's you're limited by some boundaries. You know, 
And, oh, yeah, and, 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 and you're that so too, if you but... fuck up on your private land, then it's shot. You know what I mean? You gotta you gotta almost walk on eggshells the whole time. Yeah. If you're one hundred percent public, you could blow your spots, but then just say, hey, whatever, fuck it, you'll go to the next spot. I I think it. But what if you, if you break that down though? What makes a better hunter at that? Because there's kind of like it's a double edged sword there because you're kind of you know what I'm saying? Like you can go in and be like, well, oh, I can blow this out. It's not that big a deal because I can just go somewhere else. Right. I, or you got the guy going in private like this is my only 30 acre piece i have right if i go in and fuck this up i'm done right you know so it's kind of like who's a better hunter who learns more it's probably yeah, it's, it's probably even so out situational I, I believe the same thing i wouldn't think that one guy is better than the other but uh i, I mean i guess you could go extremes if one guy is super fucking loaded or, or just lucky got born in the right situation right. And he's got 300 acres that they let uh you know 10 point mo walk for five years and just shoot him you yeah know, in the seventh year you know it's uh for sure, it's for all- sure well for example i know some kids that you know i say kids guys that are just younger a little younger than me that have they're they're into hunting but they're not into hunting like i'm into hunting like 24 7 365 in. right yeah they're not into it like that but they go in he'll kill 150 every year and he might hunt fucking three asshole. days during the rut with his bow and kill a deer and i'm like <laughs> he just hunts phenomenal ground that's good my lease, this is my first year having it. I can already tell you, I'm not going to see five 150s on this lease this year. I'll be lucky to see one 150 and maybe get a shot this year. That's just what it is. And the private ground I grew up hunting, I would never tell anyone where, because me and my dad hustle, and it's big timber. There's no food, no crop on this property, but me and my dad would somehow manage to kill big timber bucks on it not big timber of 60 acres of solid timber uh, big enough we'd kill deer on it but we'd never tell anyone where they're at because i know all the people who don't hunt like we hunt think that we hunt like they hunt and are still killing deer you know what i mean right so they think the properties that we're killing big deer on that we're hunting casually like they do and still killing them when that's not the case we're in there hustling playing the winds playing scent control moving setups uh, throwing up hanging bangs, doing what we got to do to get deer on the ground. And, and just most people don't put in that type of work. Um, so I think people lose sight of that. Like I thought of the killer good property last year, like big, big property and with potential to kill a giant. I had one opportunity last year and they were all over, all over as in more than what I'm used to. And it's nothing's, nothing's guaranteed. No, there's, there's and, and deer hunting. There's, I I'd be probably probably pretty easy to say there's there's no give me's there's no give me's in deer hunting deer are smart right but uh, I guess one more thing I'll add to the end of, uh, to this conversation is uh, I personally I think as you mature in deer hunting the all the mainstream uh, w- what people would say is a trophy a Boone and Crockett or a Pope and Young or whatever. As I've evolved and matured, I think personally he's, for myself, he's, he's throwing air quotes as a, a, you guys can't <laughs> see this, but right. there's like a lot of I'm, hand movement I'll going on. I'll use my hands the more I happening. drink. But what I'm saying is, the more I've I've gotten uh, evolved personally in my hunting career, and I've been doing it since I've been young. But you know, I've been pulled in different directions because of different influences. But anyways, as I'm maturing, make a long, make a short story long, like Steve would. I would, I'd have to say. I've my trophy is a personal thing now, and Michigan For is not sure. necessarily known as a big buck state. So if I go out and I shoot myself a hundred and twenty inch Michigan whitetail buck that's you know three years old, that right there might be a huge trophy. If I go out this year, my first year possibly hunting trad bow and shooting a a a, a four horn, a four point, or a Michigan uh, what would we call that? A pronghorn would be a Michigan eleven point, right? Yep. Michigan 11 point that, that that's going to be a trophy for me. I, I was even pushing myself this year. Like, Hey, maybe if I shoot myself a nice deer, dude, I might be completely talking on my ass right now, but maybe I'm just going to take a picture of the body of the deer and not even the horns. He's and just post shit. it. That's and, you know what I mean? I, I just don't, I, I just don't want people to think that they've got something to, uh, try to keep up with the Joneses or something like that. Just to see people go out and enjoy the outdoors and have fun with their buddies and drink too many beers or whatever. That is, right. uh, that's my ultimate goal here recently is just to enjoy it. And dude, I've last season I ate tag soup. I passed on so many deer and, uh, 
I had, I got, dude, within a hair of shooting a, a nice 140 inch buck my first year in Ohio, which is not even a huge deer. A lot of guys told me you could pass on that all day, but biggest deer I've seen on hoof, probably mid 140s, and I was, you know, 18 yards and couldn't get a shot. That was that was my highlight of the season, and I went with no venison in the freezer this year. So yeah. Dude. Yeah, man, I agree. It's uh, depends on what where it's situational. Your mindset and what's a trophy to you. You know, I shot a buck that you know to last year to other years of hunting that wouldn't compare, um, but still a really nice ten pointer. And there's a ton of people that'd be super thrilled to shoot them. And I was super stoked to shoot them. Um, I just had a kind of a rough season, and uh, this dude stood around for too long, and he was right there, man. I'm like, <laughs> man, he. I was like, I was like, he is a nice ten pointer. Swat threw one through him, yeah. and then. Uh, <laughs> You know, I was like, man, he's not as big as a deer I'd normally shoot, but by golly, I'm pumped. He's he, going to be in the studio this spring. He yeah, overstayed dude, was, his welcome for sure. Yeah, <laughs> dude, it was it was, <laughs> it was opening day, and uh, you know, I'm in the stand opening morning, and we're uh, I'm in the stand. There was a, a little basket rack and a little shithorn buck, and they came in and they were sparring a little bit, like opening morning. And I was like, yeah, one of these some bitches is getting an arrow, and I'm like, I. <laughs> I, I was excited as soon as I saw this deer come out. I'm like, dude, my heart's racing. I'm like, one of one of them's getting an arrow. I didn't get a shot because, uh, you know, as more deer funneled out into the field, uh, there was an old nanny that was busting me. But, dude, that, that basket racker, one of them was getting an arrow at him. And I just, I was like, this, for me, was going to be a deer I was going to be proud of. That's why I was going to put an arrow in it. I, I don't care. I'm like, you know, you can post comments of like oh yeah not a lot of inches on that antler like i don't care i enjoyed it i had fun if you can't have fun on my journey hey go fuck yourself right <laughs> I, do, I think if more people had that attitude you know what i mean and i'm like you know i'm i know in my mind i'm the shit and if you can't <laughs> if you can't hang on my journey well then piss up a rope dude How's that, that sound that should be like, like that, you should man. turn that into hallmark as a, a should card. Be a fucking t-shirt if you're not enjoying my journey go fuck yourself <laughs> <laughs> fuck yourself <laughs> no but that, like that, that actually dude, that's the huge thing for me dude i'm an adrenaline junkie and i think that's why i really like gravitated towards and deer hunting became my ultimate hobby because oh i thought you like kyle weeder i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i don't know who that is <laughs> shout out kyle weeder that dude's good shit <laughs> what is that i'm out of the loop adrenaline junkies it's a show oh yeah then we don't, watch, we don't watch that television shit here. My apologies. No, you, you guys, you guys listen to deer hunting on the radio. Is that what the fuck you guys do? <laughs> Only working class bow hunters. <laughs> <laughs> nice save. I love it. Um, yeah, man. I, like that's the whole thing for me. And uh, so if my heart's going, it's uh, that's kind of like my my monitor when I'm out there. You know, like I'm not making decisions based on what anybody else cares. The last thing I've ever cared about is what anybody else cared. Uh, th- throughout my entire life, really. Shit's personal, man. And so, it's uh, that's it for me, man. If if the heart's racing, it's uh, pull the trigger on it and enjoy the hell out of it. And I I hope I never lose that. And if I do, goddamn, I don't know what I'd do with myself. For sure, I'm on board, man. One hundred. <laughs> <laughs> so what are your guys' big plans for this season coming up? Man, elk hunting. And, yeah, uh, Western Colorado. Have you scouted this property? What's what's the deal with the, where you're going to be hunting, the whole plan? Uh, it's all public ground. DIY? Uh, I've, oh, yeah, yep. Uh, done a lot of digital scouting. Using and Onyx going, Maps, stuff like that? Like on Pornhub? Yeah, and yep. Pornhub. <laughs> well, yeah. Damn Pornhub, it, I got sidetracked again maps. while I was digital scouting. <laughs> <laughs> mostly porn hub digital then, scouting uh, her butthole <laughs> yep <laughs> and then uh we're gonna do a, like a back uh like a backcountry hunt where we're just going in and like camping on the mountain doing that whole sh- shebang and then uh you know man i'm just trying to i got some good stands set up this year that i moved around made some adjustments on the property i hunted last year and feel really good about that so Man, I feel I feel good about the whitetail season, um, and I'm just I don't know what to expect for elk. I'm just hopeful, you know. So what's put in the work? What's the deal? What made you decide Western Colorado? How was the? Uh, I just want to educate some of the people that are listening more. Like how over is the, the counter ta- over counter tag, or is it a? 
yeah, it's, it's actually I'm lying to you where I'm going in Colorado because I don't want everyone to know what unit I'm going to. <laughs> that's but smart. It's, uh, yeah, that's smart. It's, I accept if that. If you look, if you look at the map in Colorado, over the counter units, there's a ton of them. There's like sixty and, some, right? Yeah, I, hell, I might be wrong. There might even be ninety. Yeah, but um, a lot. you can just go buy your tag, which I've already bought my tag. I bought it online, so I didn't have to worry about buying it once I got there. Uh, which is six hundred and sixty bucks Cheap. for either sex or tree tag. Um, and then plus it, it seems like a lot of expense the first time going, um, because it's a lot of shit I don't have yet, you know, or haven't needed until I do a hunt like this, right. like a tent, um, certain types of sleeping bags, just the, the gear you need to go in and hunt six, seven days and not go back to your truck to grab more shit what, type of thing. What's you know? your, what's your real quick breakdown on the gear that you're going to be running out there with? Uh, like a pack. I got a Badlands 2200 pack. Um, which is, you know, a lot larger than I'd need in the whitetail woods. Um, so Badlands got, the, got, got the, a fucking sweet warranty. We don't give a shit if you got it at a garage sale. We'll back yep. it up. Yeah, there's, they're pretty badass. And that's part of the reason I've, I've had uh, a lot of Badlands stuff before. Like, I hunt with the Badlands Super Days, my pack for whitetails, and that thing's awesome. It's a bigger pack for whitetail hunting. And, uh, yeah, that's the cool thing, like, uh, me and my dad, we got the Badlands 2200 packs. We got the Badlands rain covers, the Badlands water reservoirs. Um, we're going Badlands pants. I think I'm going to buy a Badlands jacket before we go because all that stuff's covered. So if something happens, I can just, it's, it's a one-time buy. And not to mention the Badlands, we're getting everything in their approach camo. And that's not a sponsor, but, um, their approach camo is badass. They should be now. Um, yeah, the, it should be. It used to be a co-sponsor of the podcast, but um but yeah great quality stuff so a lot of that is just new uh getting game bags uh meal prepping like dehydrated meals that type of stuff um bro are you in elk shape (laughs) uh no not like i should be um Gert's looking a little pudgy that's coming from a fat guy yeah i'm just screwing it's just a popular hashtag that's all the only reason i bring no you've uh that's one of those things that um it was one of the big things you were talking about. You're like, Steve, you'd never be able to do an elk hunt. I'm like, why are you going? The air is thin. I go, oh, so the air wouldn't even hit on me, you know? Just, <laughs> <laughs> the air wouldn't even hit on me. No. Was, you know, it's, you know, meals, all that shit, you know, game bags, just certain things that you don't need for a whitetail hunt. There's a lot more that you don't think about. And I'm no, I'm, this is my first time. I'm going to go on that mountain and be like, shit, I need this. Dude, and I, I don't, I won't have time. it. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it'll be one of those learning curves. Um, but, you know, I'm going to I'm doing this elk hunt the way I'm doing it because it's an over the counter hunt and I'm not investing years and years of preference points mm-hmm. on a good trophy unit and then going in and fucking it up on just cutting my teeth. Have uh, have you eaten elk? Uh, have you had anybody like close to you give you a bunch of elk meat and had it in the freezer before? I've never had like someone hand me like packages of elk meat before. No, dude. That's the thing right there. I mean, I, I really, really do hope that you guys get an elk because uh, holy shit, man. It, it doesn't matter if you get a bull or a cow. Um, the meat tastes the same. It's fucking amazing. Like, that's the whole that's the whole driving factor for me to want to go elk hunting. A buddy of mine shot a nice bull here in Michigan uh, last year. It's like winning the fucking lotto in Michigan, yeah, though. Yeah, and we butchered that thing up in the garage, and I, you know, he paid me basically in elk meat to be able to use the garage and help him butcher it, and uh, we, you know, we had that for the better part of a year, and now it's gone, and it's like fuck, that shit is so good, man. Yeah, yeah I've had, I've had elk once. Um, a buddy of mine, he owned a, he's owned a guitar shop. Well, he's from Colorado. Well, his dad shot an elk, and it was at this chili cook-off. Funny enough, the first time I'd ever been to Sherrard, this area, way before I knew Kurt, I came out here and he made some, uh, it was green chili, chili with elk meat. That doesn't and, count, uh, though. Anything's good in chili. I know, but, dude, this shit was fucking dynamite. But the thing is, um, you know, you bring up that, like, shoot a cow or, an, or a bull. I don't think I'm going to shoot a cow, <laughs> no matter what. <laughs> Trophy. Like, I, I don't won't. know, man. Yeah, I, not I, even for the meat though. No, fuck yeah, that. I think, part <laughs> of the, I think the whole part of the experience out there. I've been out to. That's a lot west. of work. It you is. can go to the grocery store and buy that meat, maybe. Well, not. Here, here's my thing, man. It, here's what I thought, and I talked to our buddy Jeremy's going with us. He's kind of going to be our guide. Well, he is, um, but it's all publicly, and we're all doing it on our own. Yeah, he's from Buckstorm Productions. Does great videos on YouTube, um, and he's just he's a Western boy, man. He just lives and breathes that type of hunting. I got and you. he goes. 
you put the imagine this. I, I thought I might shoot a cow at first. And he goes, Imagine this. You got seven we were gonna be there nine days. We have seven days of full hunting. Like, wow. We figured it'd take us two days to find where we gotta be. He goes, Imagine it's day three, you shoot a cow, blow your tag. And then a 300 inch bull steps out the next day. <laughs> right here, yeah. I probably shoot reserve her. a cow for the yeah the last, last day, few days. last hour, maybe or, nope. or at least the last nope. couple days or something. Nope. Last day, last 10 minutes of the hunt is okay. what it'd have to be. All right. Because I I know how things work. I, I have enough general hunting it. experience. <laughs> to, I mean, but but the thing is too, though, uh, what I was going to add, I might be first day in, see a cow, and be like, "Fuck this! Oh, what I am throwing arrow in her." <laughs> yeah, yeah, good chance this shit. Are you, but are if you, I had to guess, I'm gonna hold off. You are bow hunting. I only bow hunt, sir. Right, gotcha. Nice. So you don't pull out a firearm? No gun hunting at all. Uh, a long a long time ago, not anymore. Well, I could tell you. Pretty much all of us were uh, firearm, muzzleloader, uh, archery, preferred archer hunters. But, uh, yeah, man, whatever gets me out, man. It's all groovy. Yeah, I hear you. But now in Illinois, you can uh, we can bow hunt during our firearm season. so Which is awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think we – have we always had that? Is it th- can you bow hunt straight through with us? Pick your microphone up a little bit. It's stuck in your beard there. I can't really hear you. It's getting you never – we never used to be able to, and it just changed like two, three years ago. Two seasons ago, yeah. And you know what? They made the announcement. Shit, it was uh, the 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 gun season was going to start on a Friday, and it was like the Tuesday before. And it goes, hey, just in case you guys missed it, uh, you know, yeah, go ahead and uh, you can use archery equipment. You just have to have a valid gun tag during both seasons. I was like, well, shit, you know, yeah, nice. the, the DNR said that and called a couple of DNR officers just to confirm called the one in the area that i'm hunting i'm gonna go hey if i kill a deer with a uh, bow and i use this is it gonna be valid and they go yeah as far as we know we saw that facebook post when you guys did it's like jeez really so you just gotta wear that's orange a- whatever and you're good to go yeah you gotta yeah. you gotta wear blaze orange yeah. that's the uh that's the that's the gimmick there well it's but- cool Here, here's what's cool about this we, we're i mean we're bow hunters we're gun hunters you like to bow hunt uh it it's cool that we're having this conversation, and I think people should recognize that. Like, people, everybody hates crossbow guys. <laughs> that's not where I'm going. <laughs> all, right, all right, I'm sorry. We uh, we can have different goals and aspirations, and all still fucking get along. Like, right. I For could sure. have a cow tag and a gun, and go to Colorado on a seven day hunt and be done by noon, and then be able to tell you when I come back where all the good bars are. And yeah, but I'm gonna tell you that your chill didn't count. Kurt, <laughs> yeah, Kurt, shit. Kurt's gonna grind this shit out until fucking the you know the tenth minute of the seventh day with a bow what trying to go for a What about the spear hunters out there, man? But it's just I I see a lot of people online like you know fighting amongst each other like oh I'm a bow hunter oh I'm a gun hunter you suck you suck and it's like well using dude gun hunters are like uh you you guys you guys are our age what like late twenties early thirties. Mid thirties, mid thirties, a little more season. Mid thirties, you guys are you guys are older than shit. Old hey, do you remember the? Do you guys remember the Game Shark when you were playing video games? No, where it give you all the fucking cheat codes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get it. Yep, uh, dude. Rifle and guns are like the cheat codes of deer hunting. So it's like if you're gonna use a gun <laughs> to go kill deer, why don't you just go play Cabela's, find out a cheat code <laughs> where you can get like a fucking fifty cal. <laughs> Machine gun and do that on the computer. Like, I, I could go one up. Deer. I could even go no, one same. up on you. This is not in the, in the nature of what Kevin originally brought up, but uh, all yeah, those trad guys would bring up you compound guys as being a bunch of pussies. Well, you know, to, but, hey, to well, each their own. Killing deer with arrows. Here, yeah, yeah, uh, right kid. there, you go. Here's here's <laughs> what I can. You could argue the crossbow thing too for that. Uh, those are kind of <laughs> like arrows, right? I mean, they've got scopes. It's uh, you can it's, shoot them a hundred yards. Now. It's all different, right? Know your environment. Yeah. Here's the deal: like, come here and say that you might see one antlered buck a fucking year. Steve, come to Michigan this year oh, and Michigan's... shoot a deer, and I'll be like, dude, I'll hand you over my fucking house. Like, <laughs> it's Steve tough. can't kill a deer in Illinois. Yeah, son. No shit, dude. I thought okay. you were saying, you know, I thought you were saying, come say that to people's faces. And I go, dude, I don't think there's anybody in Michigan that I couldn't whoop their ass. Is, is <laughs> what's going through my mind right now. I don't know Whoa, how to dude. Out of my ass, but yeah, I could beat the shit out of everybody that's currently in Michigan right now. That's Whoa, stretch. Stevie. In my mind, I'm just, I, I don't know where that came from, but yeah. That's just how many I beers in are you tonight? 
<laughs> no, 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 not enough to say that. Shit. Yeah, yeah. Like All right, count. I might regret that in the morning, but uh, yeah, oh. Detroit is a very beautiful city that uh, used to make Pontiac vehicles. <laughs> 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 no, but really though, like we don't have anything against any type of hunting. No. We just prefer. I, get I just it. prefer to hunt with a bow. I you, know? you know what? I'm I'm 100 percent with you guys. Well, I, I would, prefer bow, and if yeah. I wouldn't cry tomorrow if I had to sell all my guns and uh, they said there was nothing but archery season, I would not shed a single. Oh, I would. Oh, there'd be monster deer. I will dude. say though, if I'm gonna pick up any sort of firearm, it will be a muzzleloader. Well, you know what? If if I had to, I would I would say if it depended on me to provide meat 100 percent for my family, I would take a goddamn bazooka out in the woods <laughs> and i would shoot i would i would launch it out into my bait right. pile and, pre-cooked oh right <laughs> exactly but you know but, i mean there, know, there's a lot of guys that and my, my uncle uh is totally on a different page as me he'll go out there and he's got a permit or not a permit he's got access to um hunt a property and the guy said you are not fucking hunting my property if you are going to pass on deer i want you to shoot the youngest deer you see because those deer will cause the most <laughs> amount of damage on this property and my uncle said, no problem. You know, and he'll stack them up. He doesn't care. You know, it's just, it's just uh, everybody, everybody's got their own prerogative, and my uncle eats venison nonstop, year-round, like a king. You know, I could say that about him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Dude, he's stacking up button bucks. <laughs> oh, man. He's, he's no, he, non-discriminative. I'll just say that, non-discriminative. <laughs> I get it all, but I just, you know, we won't get into detail. There's certain ways to go, like, there's certain ways to do the deer harvest number that way um correct but, yeah i, I mean, agree and there's some guys that say i will never shoot a doe shooting doe is not the right way and that's i think that's the wrong way you know there's you can talk to a biologist correct every property needs a certain uh ratios and everything can sustain a certain amount of uh, deer and uh you really i mean i think it's a uh, responsibility for every hunter to take that at least into consideration when harvesting an animal. Well, let's say that. Yeah. Um, Kurt, how many bucks did you see last season? Ooh, like counting small bucks too or yeah. shooters? Yeah, no bucks, like deer with dicks. <laughs> Deers with dicks. <Yeah. laughs> um, I honestly couldn't even. I, would, well, fuck, I, I don't even know. Another well, rack got in the way. I couldn't really see if they had a dick or not. A lot. I saw yeah. a lot. Okay. <laughs> I saw two and I shot them both and it was with a gun. So. Like that's a maybe that's pussy. part of your problem, bro. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe I didn't see two. Okay, maybe I saw three. I let one walk. He was a four corn. But no, that's just how it is, though. Here, like you might have two oppor. I'm I'm not exaggerating. Like I'm a seasoned hunter. I've been hunting for twenty years. I might, you know, balancing work and a family and uh, the access that I have and what property I have. I might see two bucks a season. As crazy as that yeah. is. Well, the largest deer I've ever seen before I went to Ohio is the tent point that's hanging on my wall that I shot uh, with a slug gun. Right. Season. So it's just, it's that different, you know, region to region. Right. It's... But I also think it's, uh, no offense to you guys or deer hunters in Michigan, I also think that's lack of education on how good it could be, though. Right. Well, that's it, one thing, a, too. Not, I'm well, not saying no. you. I mean, as, like a whole, as a whole. Yeah, no, well, it's, it's, like it's, I'm not going to argue. Example. I'm not going to argue. Our deer management in Michigan is not where it should be as far as the programs you're, and everything. You're, I, you're, I think that we could do a lot better. You're, you're not going to fix hunter density. We have uh, the most amount of hunters per square mile. And like, anywhere in the like, country. Like right. Ten, you're not going to. But that's do you a, think, though, do you think that if you said, hey, no rifle season and we're going to limit like we're gonna do it like well, Iowa Brett, does. It's you where you have an early is, firearm. You can't do Michigan that. Michigan makes so much money, and that probably one of the reasons we've got yeah. so much public land is they make so much money off of selling uh, tags in the state of Michigan. Right. We've got yeah, probably three or four times, at least three times, the amount of sold deer tags as uh, the next highest state. Ryan, man, that's your, yeah, that's a problem. I mean, it's. Your state is hindering your guys' deer herd well, pretty much. No, it's not, though. Well, it's Here's the, the thing. Our, our deer herd grows every fucking year. We've got a lot of deer. Because everyone wants to shoot trophy bucks, right? So, I mean, that's like the goal. Everybody wants to shoot a buck, right? Yeah. But we've got a For whatever buck. reason. So, we have all these dope. Like, it's gr- it, it's it's a fucking problem, man. You're, you're not going to fix the fact that, like, all right, I lived in Iowa. I drove around Iowa, right? Like, you'll see, like, a 600-acre farm, and I'll pull into there and be like, hey, does anybody hunt there? And be like, yeah, my Uncle Joe and my cousin Steve, two guys hunting 600 acres. You right. come to Michigan, 
somebody has a 60 acre farm you go knock on the door you're like hey does anybody hunt here yeah my 16 family members it's yeah it's that it, does suck it's that different um but one thing we do have like ryan was talking about you know we have seven and a half million acres of public land and you can get to some spots where you know other people aren't willing to go and deer die of old age so it's just such a different beast man but yeah deer don't make it to old age we have a ton of deer because we have great lot, habitat right um but deer don't make it to old age a lot man. of young bucks get shot Three. do you think i got a question for you boys do you think that because it pretty much what i'm gathering is like you can't really help your situation right now because it's going to take the so laws? much to change it's it. the laws it's, right now what if they did I mean, because he said everybody wants to kill big deer in Michigan, which is why people are killing bucks like crazy, whatever. What if they, and I'm not saying I'm for this. I'm just throwing this out there. Please do, what man. This is a good like conversation. A, yeah. no what judgment if they did like zone. a point restriction, they're, like they're three tra- or four right. points a side? They, they're they, working on that in this last recent yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and it's been a It's been a success, really. Per it's county. Been, per county. It's been a good, It's it's had nothing but positive uh, interaction, but now... Uh, and I don't know if you guys are dealing with it, but now we've got the onset of CWD here. And, of course, what's the biggest contributor to CWD is Baiting. bucks. Um, bucks during the rut travel and cruise all over looking for does to nail. And uh, they're the biggest spread of CWD. And so now they that's kind of like the, the target. So now they've kind of just pulled back on the antler point restrictions here and they want to yeah, start knocking down the deer numbers and i've said it before on the podcast if if i were to come up with my perfect what I, in my head would be the perfect regulations in michigan it would be uh, a one buck rule or I, I guess it wouldn't be a one buck rule it'd be a, a one buck restricted on antler size antler points three or better on one side and the second buck would be earn it with a doe yeah, that so would be a good thing. I, I think that uh, th- uh, restricted three points on one side. If you want a second buck, you need to uh, bring your doe into a DNR checkpoint to pick up your second buck tag. But having the two buck rule, one restricted, one non restricted, and then basically pick up an unlimited amount of does in Michigan uh, for the length of time it's been, I think that really is detrimental to us being maybe known as more, one of the more whitetail trophy buck destinations probably the best thing that would fix it is if a bunch of guys would just buy out of state illinois tags and head over there to hunt there you go let's just start promoting (laughs) that well the thing is is you know the difference you can do that in illinois every year and indiana uh but the the thing is like i always compare or i would say that i wish illinois would model their seasons off of iowa because our firearm seasons are right in the middle of the rut so we don't have rifle which how many what helps us? How many total uh, weeks do you have of how many total weeks of firearms between muzzleloader and gun do you have? I think total the first firearm season's like a Friday through Sunday, the second one's Thursday through Sunday, and then I don't even know the muzzleloader seasons because um, I just bow, I bow hunt. You can bow hunt through them. Yeah, if you um, and it's, it's 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 goofy. If you look at the numbers, so I think. You know, a couple of years ago, this may be like a 2015, 2016 uh, statistic. I, I may be wrong, but uh, the ratio is there. I think um, something like uh, 125,000 deer. Well, let's say for like a round number. I think it was like 100,000 deer were harvested in Illinois that were reported legally. You, you know how this shit goes. Right. <clears throat> Dude, that's crazy. I think like, uh, I think, what, how many deer you say? That's got I think it was like a maybe it was like 150,000. You're ballparking, you don't know. I, I'm ballparking. I'm shooting I can't at the hip this. right now. I'm, I'm ballparking this, but like yeah, you uh, gotta make that clear when you throw out like a yeah. statistic. So I'm sorry, I'm uh, this is a ballpark. I don't actually know what the fuck I'm talking about, but this is what I think. I don't, but this is what I've seen. But so say it was, you know, 150,000. Well, through the two weekends of gun season, half like two weekends, right? Half of those deer killed were killed during those two weekends of firearm season and the other half were, were through both seasons. So it's just, it's one of those things you look at and you know, you can't, I would does a pretty good job, but like you can't take that to Illinois Senate or, you know, the, right. the Illinois right. politicians and be like, Hey, can we change this? 
And they're like, no, we're making a shitload of money. We're making money hand over fist because there are a lot there. There are uh, less successful people than there. Uh, I don't know how I want to say this. More people, less people succeeded than bought tags. Right. Or am I saying that right? I'm, not, I'm trying to say this in the correct way. They sold more tags. They sold more tags than people shot deer. And the fact that, you know, half the deer killed in Illinois were harvested through gun season, like, that lets you know that there is a shitload more people buying these gun tags. And it makes it really, really difficult for laws to be changed and things like that. So it's just, it's it's weird. You know, there's nothing you can really do at this point, I think. Yeah, I, I'm worried that Illinois is going to get a rifle season. If that happens, that's going to be bad news. We might be the new Michigan. No offense to you guys. Damn. Well, it's so but, crazy. We're looking. <laughs> but we're, we're but looking think at, about it. Think about it. Illinois and Iowa are known as the staples for Midwest hunting for a reason, man. Yeah, right. think about it. If, right. if Illinois gets a rifle season, what do you think is going to happen to the deer population? If, if those people couldn't get it done with a shotgun, they might get it done with a rifle. So what? now you're adding that to it. That's the that's the thing too in Michigan. We've got between our early season, our regular rifle season, yeah, our late season, our muzzle loader season. You're probably looking at when you could shoot something with a a, a gun powdered propelled projectile <laughs> over a over an arrow. You're probably looking at about three four weeks. More out than, of the season, more than that, probably even more than that. Yeah. And Ohio, and I counted it up between uh, their gun season and our and their muzzleloaders, like ten days. And then uh, when you put that now on top of the new super fast, accurate crossbows out there that can shoot a hundred yards, which make me kind of nervous as shit. I almost you almost have to get to the point where you're wearing hunter orange during archery season because guys that shoot anything that they see moving, I mean you're a, you're a, you're a almost a sitting duck or, or a, a possible victim out there during archery season. It's just, uh, dude, there's shit flying everywhere. <laughs> Basically from the end of September till the end of January, you better watch your ass in Michigan because there's shit going to be hurled your way if you're a whitetail or look like a whitetail. I think what people need to recognize is just how different the numbers are. Like you were saying uh, 100,000 deer were harvested. Like we have – Roughly yeah, estimate. We have not even close. Six. Yeah. How much was it? About fifty-seven thousand. Ryan looked it up. It was fifty-seven thousand. So we have six hundred thousand deer hunters in the state of Michigan that buy tags every year. Man, I'm glad I don't live in Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's it's a it's a that one of the highest pressure states you could probably hunt. It, in. it is per per you know per square mile. We have the higher highest hunter. Man, density. you guys sound like Walt bitching about deer hunting in Florida. <laughs> well, I'm not bitching. It's not that. I no, like I, it. I, I, it's I, know what I've, it's all I've known. I, it's I, all I've known, and I right, yeah, I, I, I eat it up because giving I, you shit. Uh, you no, know, <laughs> and I get it. I totally get it. But the thing is, for me, I like all the guys that are would rather piss and moan. I'd rather just put the work in to shoot bigger deer than them and tell them to fuck off. Cause no doubt, no doubt. It, it's, yeah, like, it's like a staple of honor kind of to just go in and say, hey, that's fine. I'm just willing to work a little bit harder and do things that you're not willing to do, and I'll be... Well, I'm sure there's bad mofos up in Michigan that kill 150-inch deer every year with a bow. There you know? Yeah, there's, John Eberhardt. There we've is. had him on our podcast yeah. several times. There, that guy is a stud, and he does it on public land. Right. But, I mean, it's not going to be... There's big deer everywhere, man. Pretty much. No doubt. No doubt. But the numbers and the common commency, I guess, if the, I'm making up a fucking word, is going to be how did different. This, how did we get here? I don't know. Probably alcohol and <laughs> talking about deer hunting. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, no doubt. I mean, Clint Casper is a good example. A lot of big deer get killed in Ohio, but that dude kills some giants every year in Ohio. Um, but I was just in Ohio last weekend, and there's I was talking to a bunch of guys who were like, oh, where we're at, there's not big deer. I'm like, well, there is, but right. maybe not well, in the I think you're, the state. you're 100% right in saying it. There's big deer everywhere. It's just shit. For the most part. Here, I got a number for you here. I couldn't come up with the uh, 2018 in Michigan, but it said – Basically, I'm looking between the in the 2016-17 season in Michigan, the amount of whitetails that were harvested. Hunters harvested about 376,000. It's fucking crazy. Let me see if I can find Illinois. Yeah, I'm kind of looking at 376,000. The one I came up for, with Illinois, 
Um, that was archery, though. What's that? The one you that pulled was up, the 50,000, that was only archery. That was so. archery. I'm looking at Illinois. Uh, Illinois, like, I got all seasons. I, um thinking this is a correct number. 2016, they were at 144,303. Total. That's what I'm looking at total, so for recent deer harvest. Um, but the, the amount of permits that were there through 2016, like, so total was like 564,000 licenses. Uh, yeah, Kurt's got that, uh, got that same graph pulled up. Like I said, I, I, I'd seen these numbers. I hated talking out of my ass cause I wasn't prepared, but I, I do remember seeing these. That's what Google's for, man. Fucking get with it. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. Well, I got, I, I got an iPhone. So I just asked Siri. <laughs> there yeah, you Archery go. Was <laughs> that dumb bitch. Thousand. So look at that. Okay, so look at so Fire this with graph. Seventy nine thousand. Yeah, look at that graph. So they have a nice little pie chart, and they uh, break down muzzleloader, youth, and uh, late season CWD. But that firearm is fifty five percent, and archery is thirty seven percent. Yeah. So you Muzzle take two percent. Yeah, you take into consideration those two weekends. Back to the point that I was trying to make. Those two weekends, dude. Those deer are just getting slaughtered. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, I mean, you got youth season two. I even I didn't forget to add that on on our our total one. Yeah, I guess ours is two percent of total harvest numbers. The moral of this entire story, I think, is don't listen to four drunken assholes talk about facts <laughs> and statistics <laughs> of deer hunting. Come on, but just Google us. See if you, you can find you better do numbers. Need to Wait, be... didn't a bunch of drunk guys decide that they were going to start the Marines? Isn't that how that shit happened in right, a bar? Those guys are badass motherfuckers, too. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not putting us on their level. Don't get that twisted, anybody. That's no, the last guy here, we talked but... to, he was a uh, Navy <laughs> SEAL. It's just crazy how different it is, like region to region, you know? It's fucking nuts. Like, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. How could people do you know, a, you know, a better job here of, of tra- managing your resource? Yeah, yeah. Just be be informed, be educated, you know, th- and th- uh, <laughs> enjoy it. Just enjoy it. That's Sadly, the- it comes down to money a lot of times in yeah. a lot of states. Yeah. It does. Our regulations, money, and stuff like that. But we could all go I'm to not a going deer- dark we- state on you. We but- could all go to your guys's deer camp or to our deer camp and drink some beers and have fun and enjoy, experiences. enjoy ourselves either way, you know? For sure. And that's, I guess if anybody's going to take anything from this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably not. <laughs> Steve, I, let's, let's wrap this shit up and let Kurt get some fucking rest. I don't want him to be sick all week in the rest yeah, of this sorry, podcast. Yeah, sorry, boys. Steve seems like he's riled up. I don't want the rest uh, of this podcast. I'm not talking a lot. I feel bad because I'm just sitting here like staring up into space. Kurt's I feel awful. You're struggling, dude, because I, I tried to pick you up when I got my bow set up. Uh, our homie Ross Bigger, I was like, hey, I'm getting it set up. This is like two days ago. I'm like, dude, you want to come through? You're like, dude, I am not feeling well. I'm like, yeah, bullshit. You'll feel good. And, nope, never did. No, <laughs> dude, it was bad. I left work today. I was the work like two hours and went home. Ugh, not no. good. Well, I that, that required me to burn a white tail hunting day, man. If that's how I can know I'm really sick. Right. Ugh. I hate taking time off of work when I'm actually sick. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Shit. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like uh, cold uh, front. They should be called these... cold front days or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm lucky that my job lets me comp time. So come November, if I got to comp two days, I'll just bust my ass a week before. And there you go. Take nice. some days for the rut. Comp time is the greatest gift that anybody could ever get in their life. Good, good old John Deere. Yes, sir. It's well, not a bad company to work for. You know, you asked a question earlier, what makes a better deer hunter? And I think the better deer hunter is the guy that's just organically, uh, you know, has the most amount of fun that he possibly can and pushes the tradition on to the next generation and leaves it better for, you know, leaves it leaves it in a better state than when he came, you know, regardless of what, mm. what, what you're shooting, where you're going, where you're doing it. I know the public land thing is super popular right now and for good reason, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Don't fucking shit on people that are hunting on nice private land. I mean, it's everybody's situation's different and, uh, Fuck, man. Here's my deal. If you buy a hunting license, you're on my team. I don't fucking care. End of story. It's that For simple. For sure. That simple. Go buy a hunting license, and we're cool. Hell yeah, man. Preach. Down with it. Thanks, get, guys. Get a girl. 
Appreciate you, man. Thanks for having us on your show. Yeah, hey, we appreciate the opportunity to uh, uh, come on your show and uh, boost your numbers, man. Let's, we really love it. Let, let, let's let's do, <laughs> hey, let's let's do the beer companies a favor and let's do this, do this again this, soon. Yeah, let's do this sometime when Kurt's let's like uh, he's like Kurt. Just hey, Steve, send me a text one night when Kurt's like, dude, I want to get a bunch of cocaine and go crazy. And then we'll, we'll, it's every night, man. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, did you need that last night? <laughs> we'll we'll do it. We'll do it then. Versus when he's giving you yep. the flu. You have to come on yeah. our show, man. Next time. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand. Maybe maybe, maybe we'll be actually be able to back to back this. We'll see. Yeah, I'll send you a picture of what Kurt looks like right now, dude. He looks like hot ass death. <laughs> like he looks Thanks, like man. he died recently, seven hours ago. He's you know rank. All right. Well, tell everybody where's the best place to go and find you, and what's the direct link to uh, Steve's Grinder account? Um, we haven't made that yet. That's coming. Uh, WorkingClassBowHunter.com. You can listen to us anywhere you listen to this podcast and new episodes on Carbon TV every other week, new regular audio episodes every week, and, uh, yeah, hope you enjoy yeah. it. And my uh, grinder account is not a twink sixty nine. <laughs> <laughs> not a twink, man. It was a pleasure talking to you guys. Absolutely. Next time we do this, we'll uh, we'll talk about why seventy seven is preferable over sixty nine. If you're going to start a grinder account. Oh dear. <laughs> I, I, for those of you listening, I do not have a grinder account. But for those of you ladies listening, I do have a Tinder. So, so. there you go. Means you're shallow. <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thanks a lot uh we'll look forward to doing this again you guys have a good evening hey you t- take Appreciate care you. see you guys and we're good are you sure <laughs> i fucking think so i, I trimmed the last time we got on the phone with you motherfuckers you guys were like hey we're in court. <laughs> <laughs>